Hello and welcome back to Bossing English with Mr F. Um, is Macbeth a tragic hero? That's what we're going to look at now. Um, a tragedy has a hero, a tragic hero. Uh, it's supposed to evoke pity and fear if we follow uh, Aristotle's uh, kind of definition of what a tragedy does to the audience, evoking pity and fear, kind of purging those emotions. Um, and do we... By the end of the play, uh, do we just think that Macbeth is some kind of evil monster who deserves his downfall? Or, more interestingly, is, there, uh, is he a tragic hero evoking pity in that we saw how noble and valiant he was at the start and what he's become? And actually, does Shakespeare show us in the final act another side to Macbeth, apart from the, the bloody tyrant, you know, who wants to know by the worst means the worst uh, and the first, you know, to act instinctively with his sword uh, and supping full of horrors and all the rest of it. Well, I would say yes, um, and I'll give you my reasoning for that. Let's have a look. This is from Act 5, Scene 3, I believe. Um, and I think here we start to see uh, a more um, tragic uh, side to Macbeth. The sickness at heart that maybe will become nihilism by the time we get to tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. Um, for me, this is one of the most uh, tragic moments uh, of self-realisation. And here we have this fancy word anagnorisis, which means tragic, re tragic realisation of one's mistakes. Um and we always have a question mark about where this happens. Uh, certainly there's an understanding that his life to come is not going to be very good. I have lived long enough. My way of life is fallen into the seer. The yellow leaf. Actually, the spelling here should be S-E-R-E. -E, and seer means dry and withered. So he's in the autumn of his life now. And we don't know if that's kind of preternaturally... Uh, more, you know, that's been sped up and happened too soon because of the sort of life he's lived. But it does suggest a, a kind of melancholy realisation that he's on the downward slope, as it were. Um, so there's definitely something melancholic about autumn and this kind of imagery associated with autumn. Obviously falling, uh, we can always link to the biblical fall uh, and, you know, the fall of man, uh, which would resonate with the audience. Um, and this is what's really maybe tragic and might evoke pitiable. Uh, it might evoke pity. Is this pitiable? That which should accompany old age, and we get this asyndetic list, honour, love, obedience, troops of friends, I must not look to have. Uh, again, that weird corrupted syntax there. It should be I must not look to have. And we get that list, but that kind of corrupted syntax shows us that all of the, it kind of just prioritises those uh, lists of nouns, um, the, uh, the asyndetic list of nouns of, of things that normally people look forward to in old age, I must not look to have. But in, in lieu of that, in, in place of that, he will have um, just kind of um, people saying what he wants to hear. Honour, uh, mouth honour and curses. Curses for obviously the, the things he's, the terrible things he's done, but mouth honour, people flattering him uh, because they're scared of him or because they want something from him. Is this pitiable? Is that linked to being a tragic hero? Possibly. We're at the end of the play and maybe Shakespeare wants us to think about that. What about how he is with his wife? Um, we learn, I think this is Act 5, Scene 5, that um, we see a very tender side to Macbeth here when the Doctor reveals the uh, in Act 5, Scene 1, her madness, she is troubled with thick-coming fancies. And look at what Macbeth says. Cure her of that. A command. An imperative. Cure her of that. Canst thou not minister? And this one long question. Look at this. And look at the problems. A mind diseased, a rooted sorrow, the written troubles of the brain, uh, some sweet oblivious antidote, cleanse the stuffed bosom of that perilous stuff. Now... I get the impression here that as well as doing 
something thoughtful and loving towards his wife. He could be speaking about himself here. He himself has a mind diseased, rooted sorrows, written troubles, and requires some split, sweet, oblivious antidote. So I think this is both tender and kind of uh, empathetic towards his wife and, and, and wishing her to be cured, but also about himself uh, and his own problems. Again, uh, that might make him pitiable. Uh, he decides, you know, throw physics to the dogs, I'll none of it. He doesn't want to have himself cured. There's, maybe that's more explicit there. Put mine armor on, he's going to die with armor on his back. Um, but again, that tenderness and empathy is here. If thou couldst, doctor, cast the water on my land, find her disease and purge it to a sound and pristine hill, I would applaud thee to the very echo that should applaud again. Purge it to a sound and pristine health, I should applaud again. So we get that hyperbole uh, there, suggesting how grateful he would be if you were able to find her disease and purge it. Find and purge it. Imperatives there. Uh, showing, I think, a tenderness and empathy and love an absolute love for his wife and, and again is that pitiable that he's unable to cure the one thing most precious to him finally his final uh, soliloquy uh, she should have died hereafter there is a, 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 a like there is regret and we might pity him and then this kind of outpouring of uh, nihilism about the meaningless of life uh, be, which seems to stem from the wife being dead Again, does that evoke pity in us that his life no longer has meaning because the, the thing that drove him maybe to do all the things he did, good and bad, is dead. Told by an idiot full of sound and fury. Is this his sound and fury? Macbeth has a lot of fury when he's making all those threats in Act 3 and Act 4 about blood. And uh, the, the first inklings of my hand, uh, of my heart, will be the first inklings of my hand acting instinctively, etc., etc., um, and look at the, the last word there. It's for, so if you get this one, you've got to explore the fact that that whole soliloquy ends, that his long figurative language ends on the word nothing. Nothing is our takeaway from that. Um, life is nothing. Nihil, nihilism, meaningless. All coming back to there again. Does that evoke pity? Uh, and finally, um, you know, um, later after that he says I begin to be weary of the sun um, you know uh, I care not uh, and again I, I think maybe this is a moment of anagnorisis I, I begin to doubt the equivocation of the fin that lies like truth there's that realisation that he's being played this is when he realises that the, the, the moving grove is that Burnham Wood the final prophecy or the second to last prophecy comes true realisation that he might be being played by the witches uh, just their puppet is this uh, the anagnorisis uh, or does that come later when uh, Macduff reveals that he was you know um, pulled pulled out of his mother's womb by caesarean and wish the estate of the world were now undone you know again there's that nihilism and we might feel that that evokes pity from us but admiration for at least we'll die with harness on our back uh, there's something chivalric uh, and honorable maybe in the warrior code of uh, and and certainly uh, we're going back to the start with the valiant noble Macbeth at least dying a warrior's death uh, at the end, even if it's for kind of the wrong reasons. And one last thing that I haven't put on here is um, with Macduff, my soul is too much charged with blood of thine already. I would say that Macbeth is not totally um, heartless and tyrannical. He doesn't want to kill Macbeth, uh, sorry, he doesn't want to kill Macduff because he's aware that He's killed his wife and children. My soul is too much charged with blood of thine already. So there's, you know, he's aware of the taint of the sins attached to him from what he did or already has done and doesn't want to add, add to that. Uh, and again, that doesn't sound like someone without, um, you know, elements that are recognisably human. All right, there we are. Some thoughts on whether Macbeth is a tragic hero at the very end and, and you know, is Shakespeare kind of showing him other sides to Macbeth at the, in the final stages of the play. Uh, 
smash the hell out of that like button and do something nice to the subscribe button. I will be back with more Felicity Anon.